Hello, my name is Brandon Swanson. Welcome to the FortiGate Interface Demonstration. FortiGate is the fastest growing firewall company in the market today, and now we're going to show you why. Here's Antonio Benoit with the product demonstration. Fortinet is a unified threat management or next generation firewall appliance. You first log into the FortiGate appliance, you have what we call our status or front page. Each one of these panels is configurable. You can add or remove content based on what you want to see. First up here we have the system serial number, uptime, HA status, is it a single or is it a uh, standalone or is it a high availability configuration. The host name which is comes in default as a serial number and most importantly the unit build or the uh, version of firmware that you're running. Operation mode can be NAT route or it can be in transparent mode which we'll get into in a minute. Virtual domains are a system runtime that can actually create virtual firewalls within the physical firewall itself. We'll talk more about that in a more advanced configuration. System resources, you have your CPU utilization, your memory utilization, and we have an external memory device called the Forda Analyzer for statistical and long-term reporting. Antonio, why is this section so important? You'll find in an ASIC accelerated appliance that the station generally will stay under 7%. If that CPU utilization starts to spike, it almost regularly means that it's a some kind of denial of service or large packet flood into the network. The memory utilization is before uh, for all our different advanced security scanning sessions can mean that you're you're scanning large files or that the um, the memory buffers themselves are starting to be overrun by a large uh, types of attacks or large file downloads. Okay. Our next, generally, you'll see the CPU utilization, the memory utilization of the box is spec properly, will stay right about where they are today. Under 10% on CPU, the memory utilization will never get much above 60%. Licensing information, we have no end user license or per feature licensing. However, we do have subscription services. So what these green arrows are telling you today is that you're getting antivirus, intrusion prevention, web content, and anti-spam updates from our FortiGuard subscription services. This box comes with 10 um, virtual domains, which we call VDOMs, uh, by default. If you wanted to upgrade that for a larger service provider or a larger chassis, there's subscriptions or, uh, excuse me, um, updates available for numbers of VDOMs. The CLI council is actually a nice feature on the front page. If you needed to do some command that was in the CLI or you're more of a scripting or you're not a GUI guy and you don't have access to the council, you can log in right here. Unit operation, this is showing you a graphical representation of the units and the number of interfaces that are actually enabled. Alert message, this is real-time alert messages coming from the event monitor. Uh, statistics, these are your current sessions through the box. Your content archive is number of uh, websites visited, email sent received, FTP URLs visited, files uploaded, files downloaded, instant messenger file transfers, chat sessions, and messages. In addition, we have these attack logs, which are number of viruses caught, IPS attacks blocked, spam detected, and URLs blocked. Antonio, how could I get more detailed information on uh, the part? So the FortiGate itself does not have a hard drive. So generally, what we have is you have real-time log access. Here is the Forta Analyzer, if it was configured, and you have real-time memory. And these are all the real-time events that are happening through the FortiGate device. If you want reports, you can come to Report Access, go again to local memory, and then you can get statistical reports based on different types of traffic that you're generated today. If you want 30, 60, 90 day or more long-term statistical reporting, then you'd probably want to look into a Forda analyzer. Okay, back to the status page. From here, you'd want to go to what we call admin, and we can show you how to set, um, excuse me, config operation. This is where you'd set either route NAT mode or transparent mode. Antonio, can you tell us the difference between NAT and transparent mode? Route NAT mode generally means that the box actually has an IP address and is either the default gateway on the network or participating in some kind of routed network. Transparent mode means the box is sitting essentially as a layer 2 bridge with simply a management IP address and is passing um, traffic through transparently. There's no need to change any of your existing IP infrastructure or any of your routing in the network as it stands today. Okay, we now go to router, and the FortiGate is a networking device first. It's not a server running software. It is actually an ASIC accelerated networking device. So we support all the uh, routing um, configurations or the routing features that you expect from a full-blown network device. First, we have 
uh, static routes. You can build static routes per interface. You can have multiple default gateways based on the interface themselves. You can also build distance and route metrics. For dynamic routing, we support RIP, OSPF, BGP, and multicast routing as it is today. Okay. Now we get into kind of the thrust of the uh, the product itself, which is our firewall policy. This in this demonstration, we're assuming that you're familiar with how a firewall policy works, and perhaps have a firewall in place or have configured and set firewalls uh, in networks today. Our firewall policies are fairly straightforward. You have interface to interface, uh, source and destination networks, the schedules, um, which could be you know 24 hours. You could have during work hours, after work hours, anything like that. Predefined uh, service groups, what's called a profile, which we'll get in a second, and then the action, which is accept, deny, or encrypt. If we edit this profile, you see it's similar to the firewall profiles that you're dealing with today. Um, however, down here we have the NAT. If you disable the NAT, uh, then you'll be routing, which if you have a unroutable 192.168 network behind, you will stop passing traffic. Um, here we have what's called a protection profile. Now, if you do this drop down box here, the protection profiles, you can have I think a, a number of two, three hundred protection profiles on this box itself, and these are all configurable. So you can pick per policy, per protection profile. This is the biggest differentiator for the Fortinet technology.